Um, I'd like to, uh, first of all, uh, um, extend my appreciation to Phoenix Group and the WWF for uh, organizing this, uh, this summit, this very uh, pertinent summit, coinciding with the uh, upcoming uh, COP27 um, conference in Sharm el Sheikh. And of course, uh, personally, I've ben benefited very much from the previous uh, distinguished speakers before me, especially in, uh, uh, <clears throat> as, my, as, my, uh, as I'm beginning my mission in China to, uh, to be briefed and informed about China's efforts and the uh, scientific community's contributions to uh, mitigate uh, and address climate change in China and worldwide. Uh, of course, I would like to thank Mr. Chatterjee for his very uh, well-rounded uh, uh, briefing on the UN uh, uh, contributions and, uh, and the prevailing uh, international scene with regards to um, um, climate uh, action. Um, since COP26 in Glasgow, uh, lots of uh, events have taken place. We have witnessed uh, an unprecedented extreme uh, weather events, whether in Pakistan, in Nigeria, in the US, in China, and uh, the science, scientific community believes it's, they are all climate-induced. Um, moreover, geopolitical conditions uh, worldwide have deteriorated. Uh, the uh, Russian-Ukraine war has made a very negative impact on uh, energy supplies, more reliance on fuel, on fossil fuel, and of course, in our case in Egypt, disruption of food security and, uh, and uh, supply chain, especially grains, wheat from the Black Sea ports. Um, in addition to that, there is a tension, there are the tensions that led to the suspension, suspension of climate dialogue between uh, you, the United States and China. There is also a chronic, unfortunately, a, a buildup of a trust deficit between developed and undeveloping uh, and developing countries, uh, especially when it comes to the fulfillment of uh, pledges taken to finance uh, developing countries' ne climate action needs, and uh, of course to cut the greenhouse gas emissions. So all this is a backdrop to the build up to COP27, which is going to start next week in Sharm el Sheikh. So what is Egypt? What what Egypt aspires to? Come up, come from this, emerge from this conference. We want to achieve progress on climate action with all stakeholders, cooperation, and goodwill. This is paramount. Egypt believes it's important to move from mere pledging and, 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 and promises to actual implementations of agreed upon agreements and understandings and pledges. From Rio 1992 to Paris 2015 to Glasgow 2021. Primarily in unlocking, unlocking finance to provide the needed annual contributions to the help developing countries to limit global warming below two, preferably 1.5 degrees uh, from pre-industrial levels, and we expect more countries to deposit their nationally uh, determined uh, contributions or NDCs that they have pledged to deposit uh, detailing their commitments and their climate action policies. Uh, for the, the previous months we have uh, undergone with all stakeholders within the uh, auspices of the UN FCC, uh, negotiations to try to build some sort of consensus leading up to the summit. Now allow me to just give you a, 
a brief, a brief overview of what the summit will look like or the, the conference will look, will look like. We have um, the uh, heads of state and government section, the plenary summit, so to speak, on the 7th and 8th of November. Uh, in parallel with that, we have six round tables. Uh, and it's, uh, the novelty is that it will be co they will be co-chaired by one chair from the developed uh, countries and one from the developing countries. And themes of crucial importance, uh, just transition, food security, innovative finance uh, for climate, investing in the future of energy, water security, and sustainability of vulnerable communities. Moreover, there are initiatives which will be taken by the Egyptian presidency of the, of the COP27. Uh, of course, uh, as a developing countries, we'll have more focus on developed countries' needs, meaning uh, we, we have an initiative on food and agriculture. We have uh, another one on urban, sustainable urban, urban resilience. Since cities are a big driver of global warming, and, but could also be engines for climate action. Uh, we have a, a decent life initiative for a climate resilient Africa, and uh, as well as initiatives on a just and affordable energy transition, water action adaptation, and uh, scaling up a share of green investment in the national plans of at least, by at least 30% uh, in 2030. Now, during its upcoming COP27 presidency, Egypt counts on China, counts on the US, counts on the European Union, counts on development partners, UN and all the relevant organizations. They count, we count on international NGOs, civil society, in bridging the, cap, the gap between uh, all parties in the negotiation process and as an African developing country to address the concerns of the least developed countries in the hope that all needed efforts are harmonized to secure a sustainable future for all human beings and other forms of life on the planet. Allow me in the end to just give uh, some of the thoughts and remarks on the current uh, uh, ongoing cooperation between Egypt and China uh, with respect to climate change and renewable energy. Uh, both countries share uh, principles guiding climate action, namely the principle of uh, common but differential responsibilities. Uh, we also uh, aspire to, to have uh, more more uh, uh, cooperation in the upcoming uh, months since we, uh, of course, there is a very important nexus and links between climate change and biodiversity. And uh, of course, we are aware that China will, will be chair of the COP15 uh, Biodiversity Convention, uh, uh, which will be held in, uh, in Canada next December. And Egypt was the chair of the previous one. So uh, there is a very important uh, hope that uh, we can coordinate our efforts to, to, to have more uh, harmony between both uh, pillars of, of climate action in the world. Um, there is also very, very promising uh, and uh, important cooperation in, uh, in helping Egypt uh, adopting more renewable and more green uh, policies. And of course, especially in transportation, our electric, first electric vehicle will be uh, uh, produced with Chinese expertise. Our first electric bus, uh, of course, in, uh, manufactured in, in, in Egypt. And uh, the fourth, uh, probably the fourth biggest solar pa pa panel in the world is, uh, has been built with the um, contribution from, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, many, many uh, developing uh, institutions and partners 
and the AIIB, of course, has <coughs> played a very important role in, in financing this, this very important uh, project. Um, there is a light, uh, light speed train, light uh, uh, in connecting Cairo with the suburbs, also with the Chinese um, uh, uh, support. So uh, we aim mo uh, in, 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 in conclusion to have, a, um, as my mandate here as ambassador to, uh, of Egypt to China, to uh, strengthen all this, um, this uh, cooperation in, uh, in the uh, hope that uh, uh, more, more uh, uh, green investment in Egypt's uh, strategy for climate uh, action and for, uh, to combat uh, not only in Egypt, but with a view to uh, have a, a more uh, focus on the developing countries' needs and Africa in particular. I thank you again for hosting me and I, I wish the success to this summit. Thank you very much.